question is, are you ready? Good morning, Crema de Nona. How are we all doing out there today? Uh, of course, I'm joined by, over here, my buddy Julio. And I got another one of my buddies down here. Andy Chingalani, he decided to hang out with us today. Hi, guys. How are you? Doing great. Doing great. Thank you. Happy Taco Tuesday. And don't yeah. forget, today is hashtag 407. Let's go and support our local businesses. That's, you know, we want to do that for the whole month of April. So, hey, good campaign for everybody out there. Yeah, so, excellent. So, uh, as you know, we are continuing with everything we've got. So, this is kind of fitting that, that we've got our buddy Andy here today. Uh, since he deals with uh, writing and content and uh, various things like that, those of you that know, over uh, last week's mess, I got into copyright jail. So, I, I, needless to say, I had my own problems with copywriting. <laughs> so, uh, I, I think we're just going to jump right into it because I want to. I want to ask you, Andy. Uh, as far as your writing, I know you got to come up with content all the time and obviously not plagiarizing and just stealing off of everything else that's out there. How, how do you keep it fresh in your mind to constantly come up with something? Well, one thing that's a, an advantage for me is that uh, I don't specialize in a single industry or even one or two industries. Um, I am in a lot of different, uh, types of, do a lot of different types of work. For example, I have a, a client that I do regular blogging for that is a, uh, in the hospitality industry, uh, it's a timeshare company. Um, at the same time, I do a lot of healthcare writing. Uh, I have a couple clients that, uh, that I do that type of work. And I've worked with all kinds of small businesses. I've written content for uh, IT companies, uh, attorneys, uh, real estate agents, um, and uh, you know, even have gone into things that are really heavily into the industrial and manufacturing uh, space. Uh, I have one client that uh, that I wrote, rewrote basically the entire website uh, a couple of years ago. That what they do is they manufacture the accessories for these enormous conveyor systems like you might find at a coal mine or a power plant so as you can see that keeps it fresh um, because part of what i enjoy about my job is that uh, especially when i start with a new client i have to learn what it is they do so that piques my curiosity and and i get to spend a lot of time asking questions and understanding it uh, because that's the only way I can write about it in a compelling way. So I'm kind of like the translator. I'm the go-between between the industry and their prospect. So, so Andy, I, I, I see that, you know, listening to you, you cover a variety of industries um, per se. Do you specialize in a few that you just master in or how do you interact with your customers if they're like in an industry where like, Hmm, I didn't hear it mentioned, but this is still something that I can do. So how do you interact with that information with your with a new customer? That's a that's a great question. Um, one of the things that I think is important is even though college was a long time ago for me, my degree is in journalism and I was trained as a reporter. I just, you know, when I got out of college, I didn't want to go into newspaper reporting. Um, I decided to go into advertising instead. But I still retain those skills where uh, I'm very comfortable just sitting down with a client and saying, let's start at the beginning. Tell me, help me understand exactly what you do. And there's an, there's an advantage to that that may not seem quite so obvious. And that is, a, you, especially if you take a highly technical field, like let's say it's an IT company, and you bring in a writer or you have somebody on staff or the owner is a, is a good writer, what ends up happening a lot is that the content that they write may be really accurate, but the only people who can understand it are other people in the same industry. That may not be your customer. So for example, using the IT uh, example again, you know, 
an IT company that works with small businesses wants to be able to communicate their value to small businesses who are attorneys and real estate agents and so on, or office managers uh, who are responsible for that sort of thing. So that I, I put my reporter hat back on when I'm starting with a new industry um, and just try to learn as much as I can about it. Well, you, you did that with us when Rob, Rob and I and yourself sat down at, the, at Gold Star Title and um, somehow you came up with questions to ask, you know, our Jennifer there, and somehow you, then you just integrated what she was looking for into what you're looking for and, and made it happen. Yeah, I think that's a really good example. Um, and, you know, I had some experience, I had some knowledge about what, uh, what a title company does because I bought and sold a couple of houses, but I really had to dive into it with that and get into the more technical aspects of it but then at the same time, when once I have all, let's just say, you know, as I do that, I have this ton of data and information and knowledge about your industry. But then I got to ask, who am I talking to? Am I talking to real estate agents? Yes. Am I potentially talking to buyers and sellers of homes who have no real technical knowledge? And then what's going to motivate them to get in touch with you? Um, so there may be a lot of things that I learned that I leave, actually there always are a lot of things I learned that I leave out because I don't think that they really have value, uh, toward the goal of getting the prospect to call you. So in a way I'm kind of jealous of you because you get to nerd out on these things all the time. And it's like, it's like a never ending discovery channel. So yeah. uh, bringing that in with the websites and that, uh, can you can you tell me how uh, how important it is uh, having that content on your site, whether it's a new site or an established site, as far as your rankings, people being able to find you, uh, basically the whole world that we live in right now with this whole thing. How how important is this content? It's very important. You know, I, I often say that I write for two audiences. I write for people, you know, the, the, the person sitting behind the computer reading your content. The other audience I write for is search algorithms. And um, you need to be able to uh, accomplish getting a message across to the people in a way that it also appeals to the search algorithms. So there are certain things that you need to do in terms of, say, for example, let's say a phrase would, for the people, it would normally come up, you know, seven, eight, nine times in, you know, a long page of copy. Well, you want to try to figure out ways to reword that phrase so that it will appeal to more of the search algorithm uh, needs. Um, the other thing that is uh, really important about that is that while people like short copy, search algorithms like long copy. Um, because from the search algorithms point of view, uh, if it's over, you know, say 600, 800, 1000 words, then that means somebody's put some effort into it. Because it's, it's not that hard to just crank out 200, 250 words on a topic for, for a lot of people. So how do you balance that? Uh, the challenge with that is that you need to write, the writing needs to be compelling and it needs to hold people's interest. But there are other tricks you can do. For example, try to put in um, subheads every so often just to break it up. Bullet point lists help, help the, the page just be more appealing to the eye um, and pull people in. So it's very important. Now you're you're talking uh, six eight thousand words. Uh, just just so you guys out there have have an idea of how how much two hundred words is. Obviously, you know one hundred and forty characters is Twitter, so mm -hmm. there's not a whole lot there. Figure you double that, you're you're almost at three hundred words. You're only talking. Correct me if I'm wrong, Andy. We're only talking maybe two paragraphs, possibly. Well, uh, those phrase are, into a third? Yeah, I mean, you know, a good rule of thumb is that um, 
you know, double space typed on a page, a full page is about, you know, 225, 250 words. So if you get up to a thousand words, it's like four, four pages, four to five pages, double space typed. Um, yeah, Twitter, I mean, that, and that's even harder because it's characters, not words. So you get 144 characters and, you know, that might, that might only be 25 words. Um, yeah, it's very, very short. That's why Twitter is really more to get people to your website where the longer content is. In a lot yeah, of well, I, don't, I don't think everybody we know uses it that way. In my view, yeah. And, and but and but if you often, think about, no, go ahead, Julio. And how often are, you know, are we having or should we be writing this content? Is it like a weekly thing? Has it changed since, you know, this virus thing has, you know, made us the new normal, how we conduct business and are doing, whether it's our website or, you know, whatever it is that we're doing. So how, how has that changed? Well, uh, I'll, I'll start with the, uh, the first question um, as far as the frequency goes. <clears throat> you know, one of the things that factors into the uh, search algorithms, uh, Google search algorithms, is how long has it been since the last time you updated your content? So every now and then you'll see a website where as you read through it, like the latest blog post is from three years ago. You go to the bottom and it says copyright 2018, things like that. You know that they're not, the, whoever's behind the website is not really adding or changing anything. And so look at that from uh, say Google's standpoint the question is, you know, if, if you don't care enough about your content to update it from time to time, why should my you Google say my user? Why should they care about it? And so your your rankings will drop. Drop. Um, so let's say, you know, it, there's really, you know, it's the more the better. So if you can only uh, do it once a month, that's good. If you can do it twice a month, that's better. If you do it every week, that's even better. Um, so that that's where that's where the frequency comes in, and that's why a lot of companies do regular blogging because it systematically adds content to your website if you stick to the schedule. Now, now one thing I do want to say is that you more content and more frequency is better to a point. Uh, and I know Facebook and pretty much any anything that's out there, if you're just throwing stuff out and you don't have uh, the Kim Kardashian type following that's out there, it's going to go against you because at that point, once you're putting things out three, four, five times a day, every day, a couple things a day, and you don't have everything to go with it, it picks up that you're bothering people now. So it's going to start pulling things. So definitely keep that frequency in mind you know when you're doing that kind of stuff too i'll i'll say this i mean you know it's been 25 years now since uh search has been an issue or has been a thing um and many 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 people have continuously tried to figure out a way to game the system and google's always on the other side of that equation trying to figure out how to prevent people from gaming the system. And so what the best long-term recommendation I can make is put out good copy. So or put out good content. So Rob, when you, when you were saying, I think this is what you were referring to is you can't just put garbage out there every week. Exactly. Over and over and over again and expect it to do you any good. Um, I read an article not long ago that I was fascinated with that pointed out that uh, Google takes in uh, about 200 data points in assessing any web page. Um, and I've heard some people say it's actually closer to 300. There are so many things that factor into it. And some of those have to do with, you know, are you gaming the system? For example, like you wouldn't want to put the put identical copy on multiple pages within your web or your website. It just won't do you any good. Things like that. Yeah, and on the design side of the web thing, uh, mm -hmm. I, I do have tools I use when I am 
putting a page together and going through it and uh, quite honestly sometimes it's an absolute pain in the ass because it's it, it's sitting there telling me you don't have enough of this you need to bump this up a little bit and then it turns around and says on the other thing with it and this could be all in the same page oh you got way too much of this shrink this down you're bugging the hell out of people so and and i i know i know damn well with the writing it's it's the same thing you got to be you got to be engaging you've got to be subjective you got to have quality content you got to keep things moving uh sometimes you have to have bad grammar we had that talk on uh, one of the projects that we worked on before where uh i, I remember it came up when we were sitting there they're like that's not the correct grammar of how to start a sentence or how to go about certain things and you said well your reader would probably appreciate that <laughs> yeah i know sometimes that comes up i kind of you know you you may have heard that phrase that if you're going to break the rules at least know the rules you're breaking and break them for a reason and i think that applies to grammar too there are certain things that um you know people may say about uh something that they see written down and my response is, you know, we're not writing a college term paper here. We're writing ad copy. And you get into these really arcane rules of grammar, and nobody knows them, and nobody notices them. Only the, the college uh, English professors might even <laughs> notice them. So, you know, I, I kind of look at it this way. I, you know, I know the rules of grammar. And if I break them, it's because it serves the purpose of the business needs of the client. Yeah, and, and sometimes you have to do that to get the message mm -hmm. across because ultimately, and, and I know sometimes it, it's got to be a little bit of a pain in with your clients on this, but it's not about your client. It's about who's going to be looking at your client. Mm -hmm. and, and that, again, goes back to being subjective and, and knowing who and what you're writing for. Right. Uh, on, on, on this content, on this content, Andy, um, I know that we need you for this kind of stuff, and I'm, I'm glad we're having you here with Crema de Nona this morning. You know, um, is like starting the sentences. Is there like um, somewhere where we can resource some of that stuff, you know, to help you do your job or whatever? Or if, if you know, maybe the self-starter needs to go somewhere. Is there like? You know, like like proper words, you, you you need to start out a sentence with or whatever. I mean, I know it's improper grammar, you know, or English, whatever you want to call it. But is there something you can help? You know, it varies so much depending on the um, the type of uh, business that you're writing about. Um, the one thing that I will will say uh, to to people who say want to try to write a blog post, for example, or their own copy, is to start with an outline. Um, you know, don't don't just sit there and start banging away at the keyboard because you'll end up flying all over the place, like, you know, blowing up a balloon and letting it go and, you know, you know all over the place. Um, and I've seen that happen a lot. So um, so it's a good it's a good idea to start with an outline and consider from the beginning, like, what is the really impactful thing that you want to say that's going to grab people's attention? Uh, right off the bat because you literally only have a few seconds of people's eyeballs to put them in to pull them in and if you don't you lose them they're going to click they're going to click on to something else um, so that's that's important that's really the important thing is to be really interesting at the beginning well and, and let me ask you this Andy now that we have like so much time on our hands um, mm -hmm. Is, is is that what you just said about you know you only have so much time to capture is it are we are we able to stay a little bit longer with that audience or should we still keep it you know keep it short and sweet and simple or or are we having to expand it a little bit more because you know okay now I, it's not like they, they're going to go to an appointment or anything else outside right um hopefully you know stay at home thing but is there something like are we expending it an extra 30 seconds 60 seconds anything no, honestly, I don't think so. I think it has more to do with people's internal attention span than it does with the fact that, uh, you know, people may be rushed or hurried or have a lot on their mind. I, I just think that that's kind of where uh, our culture is headed, is that if you don't, you know, think about it, you know, also with watching things on TV, 
you know, if you don't grab me and like, you know, really quickly in the first couple of minutes, like, I don't, I'm not going to do this. I, I'll, I'll go back and find something else on Netflix, you know, or uh, you'll notice it in advertising on television now that uh, a lot of, a lot of the ads we see, they really try to, you know, hook you in right away because they don't want you to speed through it. They don't want you to mute. They don't want you to change the channel. Um, so it's, it's, it's important. It's still important. Yeah, and, and, and time, time is quick. Uh, uh, on the, when I get into it on the, on the sales portion of, of what I do, 17 minutes is the target uh, you want to shoot for uh, for your whole presentation. And that's when you're sitting in front of somebody. Reason being, after after you hit the 18 minute mark, your your mind and that starts shutting down. Uh, so psychologically, no matter unless it's really really engaging, you're you're gonna be be shutting down pretty quick. Uh, right. Even to take that a step further, when I was learning music, we worked off of a program. This was in college. Uh, it was an 18 minute program. We'd practice something new for 18 minutes. We would stop, walk away completely for five minutes, and then after that, you come back. But the trick is, when you come back, you have to run through that specific lesson every day for 21 days. Otherwise, it doesn't sink in. But same thing, you take that into your content, it, it, anything that's out there, people are gonna see, 17 minutes is, a, is about your target. If you're my wife, it's five minutes. I can't tell you how many times I've been stuck. You're watching this movie, Five minutes later, she's gone. I'm an hour into this thing, hoping to God it's got to turn around. And yeah, yeah. And at that point, I'm vested into it. I'm go I'm gonna watch the rest of whatever she stuck me with. But, but yeah, 17 minutes. You you want to keep it short. And re well, reading's the same way. But uh, again, when you're talking about the subheadings in that, that's that's where it's crucial. Where it's gonna gonna break it up. Uh, hey, Rob, I got. I'm Rob, on those presentations, are you including like content, like to say um, a PowerPoint or anything like that, or is it just 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 talking? What are, we could do we could do PowerPoints. We could we could do whatever anybody wants. Uh, it's but just in those last seventeen couple. minutes that you're talking about, like we got a seventeen minute span. So what am I encompassing in those seventeen minutes? Oh, you're talking about a presentation. Uh, yeah, presentation. That sorry. that depends on when you're sitting down with your client. So that, that's whatever your business material is uh, for what you're presenting. Uh, but that's a whole different one. We'll get into that one when we talk about my training, or you can hop over to my website and check that stuff out there. Uh, okay. But I, I do want to finish up with Andy. I think we've got one more question. I'm going to kind of throw you on the hot seat with it. Uh-oh. Every every artist and, and yes, I do I do consider uh, writing is is an art, obviously. Uh, what do you do as far as writer's block? Every artist, whether it's a musician, a, a painter, uh, whatever it is, you you get to a point where absolutely nothing comes out, and you've got a deadline or something coming out. How do you uh, uh, how do you overcome that? Well, there's there's two things that I'll do. Um, one is if I have time, I'll just put it away and get up and go walk out in my yard or just walk around the block or, you know, flip on the television, something to kind of, it's almost like cleansing your palate, you know, <laughs> you just Detox. Gotta, Detox. so you're having some whiskey. <laughs> yeah, exactly. exactly. <laughs> you got to get it out of your head for a little bit. Um, sometimes that works. Sometimes it doesn't work. If I don't have time to do that, or if I just, I'm still blocked after that, I just keep writing. You just have to keep writing because, and, and honestly, what will happen is whatever I start with next, it's garbage, but I just, yeah, yeah but out of that garbage, you can come up with something that is usable and correct me if I'm wrong. One sentence could be all it takes to start something up again. Oh, absolutely. There, there are times that, especially at the beginning of something, uh, I'll, I'll try five different things just to get that first sentence that, that I think is really going to catch people's attention and, and draw in their interest. And then once I get it, it, it just, it's, it's a little strong to say it writes itself, but it just flows after that. You know? Yeah. Well, excellent. 
we're almost out of time here. Thank you so much for hanging out with us this morning, Andy. Uh, it's it's definitely something awesome to hear. Uh, it's it's not really a business a lot of people really think about in the forefront uh, as something that they would need, but it, it is definitely, definitely very crucial in what you want to do for business. So, guys, uh, I do have him on the banner, Chingalani Content Solutions. Andy, tell us how we can get a hold of you. Uh, my phone number is 407-491-5285. Uh, you can go to my website, which is at chingalanicontent.com. And uh, you can email me at andy at chingalanicontent.com. Excellent. Okay, perfect. Do us a favor if you can, Andy. Please mm -hmm. put that into the comments uh, off of this yeah. uh, feed. So that way everybody's got access to it. And again, you guys out there. Please like us, share us, uh, mention it to somebody. Again, you put this one thing out into the world. All it takes is share it to one person and uh, as far as someone else's business. And we've got a local business right here with content, Chingalani Content Solutions. Get it out. Let's get him some work. Let's get him so much damn work that uh, his hand falls off. So I'd like to see him in a brace in a month. <laughs> no, I'm just, I'm just joking. Thank so, you, Andy. Anyway. Yeah. Thank you so much, Andy. The rest of you guys, thank you so much for hanging out with us. On behalf of myself and Julio, I'm no, Rob Hines. I'm not done. I'm not well, done. I'm going to finish up real quick, and then you got about a second to say goodbye. But no. you can catch me at rphstrategies.com and RPH Strategies on Facebook. And Julio. Well, I just wanted to see you, show you my new style of going out to work today. So I have a T-shirt, V-neck style. I do have my uh, my tie on, so this is my business stay-at-home attire. And since I'm working in the back porch right now, you know, it's a little bright out there. So you know, I just want to, <laughs> hey guys, just on the real, you know, let's let's continue supporting each other. Crema de Nona is still here. Um, presentations are going to go on as normal. I send most of you guys an email. If you want to be on our email list, please send me an email at uh, Julio at GoldStarTitle.net or Put the comments below in the uh, sex in the comment section. We'll get you on our distribution list. But um, we're going to be doing this every every week. Um, we'll do Tuesday at 9 a.m. Like I mentioned in yesterday's uh, Facebook post, and doing the presentations. We, we, we want to bring important content to you. If you have an idea, reach out to Rob and I. Right. That's right. And let's get you let's get you on, man. You know, we it was we got a schedule an agenda on our presentations. And we're going to continue with that. So that's uh, us showing our loyalty to our attendees for Crema and Ona. And on that, send something in the comments, and we'll see you next time. You guys have a great day. Thank you.